Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine. We are continuing in chapter 11, which is about thermochemistry. So this is part two, and we're going to discuss heat capacity and specific heat. So what is meant by heat capacity? Heat capacity is the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of an object by exactly one degree C. And the specific heat capacity is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree C. So you can see here that heat capacity is just how much energy to raise the temperature of, say, a rock. And specific heat capacity is, well, how much energy would it take to just raise the temperature of one gram of it by a degree C? So it's specific. And again, in general, we refer to it just as specific heat. So we have to talk a little bit about units. So a calorie is defined as the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of pure water by one degree C. And one calorie is equal to something called a joule, 4.184 joules. And the joule is the um, System International, the SI unit for energy. So when we're talking here about a calorie, notice that, that this is a lowercase c. So this calorie is different than a food calorie. A food calorie is actually a thousand lowercase c calories. So a food calorie is actually a kilocalorie. So it's named after the English physicist, the Joule is, um, James Prescott Joule. And as I said, it is the SI unit for energy. And one Joule is equivalent to 0 0.2390 calories. So calorie, again, is the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of one gram of pure water by one degree C. Again, this is written with a lowercase c because a food calorie or a dietary calorie is written with a capital C, meaning that it is a kilocalorie as opposed to a garden variety calorie. So one food calorie is 1,000 regular old energy calories. So heat capacity really depends on two things. The mass of the object, so if you're trying to raise the temperature of a gram of water as opposed to a million grams of water, you're going to need a different amount of energy. And the second thing is what the composition of that object is. So for instance, if you think about when um, in the summer you go to the beach and you're walking along the sand that isn't near the shore, the sand gets really, really hot. And then you run into the water and your feet are nice and cold. That's because water has a high heat capacity and sand, which is silica, has a low heat capacity. So when we solve for specific heat, we use a device called a calorimeter. And it's a special device that's used to determine the specific heat of a substance through energy transfer. So you use a reference substance, typically water, to compare the heat that is gained or released um, to whatever the substance is you're trying to figure out. And this is an example of a very fancy type of calorimeter. And actually, this is the type of device that's used to figure out the number of food calories per serving in whatever you happen to be eating. So if you look at this, we've got a big old container. It's usually made of stainless steel. And it's uh, screwed shut with uh, an o-ring so it's very tight and then within it is a second stainless steel chamber so there's insulation in between and then inside of this you'll see is water and then yet another container within that and that container also has a lid that seals and that would be where you would put your substance so let's say this was um, some potato chips and you have ignition wires here so that you can ignite whatever it is to undergo combustion, for instance. And then in the outer chamber where the water is, you have a stirrer and a thermometer. And so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be observing the change to the water. So for instance, if this is made of aluminum and it conducts heat and you burn something inside of it, 
that energy will be absorbed and the temperature of the water will go up. So calorimetry is the accurate and precise measurement of heat changes for physical and chemical processes. And the heat released by the one system is equal to the heat absorbed by the other system. So again, the heat released from whatever it is that's burning, for instance, gets absorbed by the surroundings. So a calorimeter is an insulated device used to measure this uh, process and calorimeters may be simple like a styrofoam cup or soda can or very complex such as that bomb calorimeter that I showed you a moment ago. So for water, specific heat depends on what state of water we're talking about. So if we're talking about water, which is a liquid at room temperature, it absorbs 4.184 joules for every gram degree C. Whereas if you're trying to change the temperature of ice, its specific heat is 2.03 joules per gram degree C, and for steam, it's 2.01. So the takeaway from this is notice that ice and steam are almost identical in their specific heat capacity, whereas water is twice that amount. So what does that mean? It means it takes twice as much energy to change the temperature of water as it does for ice or steam. So how do we calculate specific heat? Specific heat is, remember, joules per gram degree C. So the equation we use C specific heat is equal to Q, the amount of heat absorbed or released, divided by the mass and the change in temperature. Where C is specific heat, M is mass in grams, Q is the amount of heat absorbed or released either in joules or calories, and delta T is the change in temperature, and delta T is always calculated as final temperature minus initial temperature. So delta T is always T2 minus T1. Make note of that when you're doing calculations because to do otherwise will result in the wrong answer. So specific heat, there are two forms of that equation. The first one I showed you specific heat is C equals Q over M delta T. And the alternate form of the equation is solving for heat, absorbed or released. Q is MC delta T, or some people refer to it as Q equals M cat, because it looks like cat. So enthalpy is what we're talking about here, and that is another term used to describe heat change at constant pressure. The terms heat and enthalpy are used interchangeably, and the letter H is used interchangeably with the letter Q. Enthalpy, delta H, if it's a change, or Q. So Q equals MC delta T is referring to enthalpy change, and again, enthalpy and heat being interchangeable. So this is Ms. Augustine for now signing off. There will be videos showing you how to do these specific heat calculations um, and some calorimetry problems as well. Again, this is Ms. Augustine signing off.